Good evening, everybody. Happy Wednesday to everybody out there. Welcome to the Chain Movers podcast. As usual, I will be your host, Chad. Um, for those of you who cannot see us right now, um, Reed is not with us tonight. He uh, he got tied up, but uh, that's okay. I'm going to be your pilot on this magic carpet ride, so uh, buckle up. And uh, sit back, enjoy, and uh, let's get at her. You know, we got lots to get to just because Reed's not here doesn't mean the sports world stopped. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I got I to gotta take it from here. So let's get at it. Uh, before we get into the good stuff, uh, I always like to open up with a couple little side stories of uh, what's going on out there in, in the um, wide world of sports. And uh, interesting signing today, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers signed Richard Sherman to a one-year deal. Um, Sherman hasn't played in a while, uh, I mean widely regarded as one of the, the top DBs slash corners in, in all of the NFL for many years. Um, played at a very high level uh, due to super knowledgeable, super smart Pretty sure he went to Harvard or Stanford or, or something like that. Um, very smart guy, and he utilizes those smarts on the football field. And uh, lo and behold, um, the Bucks do have a need. They're a little thin at DB. Um, so they, Tom Brady himself uh, supposedly called Richard and said, Richard, we, we need a DB, and uh, do you want to come play with us? And, and sure enough... I mean, if Tom Brady gives you a phone call, you're probably going to show up. So, um, yeah, lo and behold, Richard Sherman, the newest Buccaneer. Um, and that comes right on the tail end of Josh Gordon signing with the Chiefs, which we talked about on Monday. Um, he was supposed to sign Monday night, and he, in fact, did. So, uh, I mean, Sherman said he's he's a couple weeks out for being game ready. Um, Gordon hasn't given any such indication as when he's going to get back in the lineup um, and actually play in a meaningful game. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Those are two big names. Um, see what they can do. I, I, I mean, those guys, yeah, they got to stay in shape, right? So I, I was surprised when Sherman said two weeks, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. He has lost a step over the years, um, which happens – to every DB, but uh, I, I like I like Richard Sherman. He's an intense competitor. I think he'll do well in Tampa. So time will tell. Uh, second side story: James White out for the season with a hip injury. That's a big loss to the Patriots. Uh, James White is kind of one of those unsung heroes that flies under the radar, and you know he's a leader on that team but uh, doesn't get heralded as such. And, I mean, key third downs, things like that, that ball's going to James White. Um, you, can, you can pretty much take that to the bank. Um, and they are not going to have him now, which is a substantial loss um, for the Pats. And they're having a, a rough start to their season as is without having to lose White along the way too. So, um, yeah. Too bad, feel for them, especially with uh, the Buccaneers coming to town this week. Um, they're going to have their hands full once again. Um, no word on who's going to take that spot. Um, the Pats' backfield is typically a difficult one to figure out anyway. Because um, Bill, if you fumble, Bill doesn't like that, and then you sit. And the next guy comes up, and he'll rush for 100, and then he's the flavor of the week for a couple weeks. And... And then he'll screw up, and I mean, if you watch the NFL, you know how the Pats' backfield works. So, uh, yeah, no word on who's going to take his snaps, but uh, could get interesting in Patriot land. I do know that. Um, they, they're one and two, and they got the Bucks coming to town. I don't remember the last time the Pats started one and three. And, uh, I mean, their schedule doesn't look super favorable either. So... Here's hoping Bill's got a, something in his bag of tricks, but but we shall see. Uh, let's go over that Monday nighter. 
It actually wasn't much of a game. NFC East divisional game. Cowboys Eagles. Cowboys won this one handily, uh, 41-21, um, putting the Cowboys up to two and one, and dropping the Eagles to one and two. Uh, Cowboys, yes, are in first in that division. Um, it's still a crappy division, but they are in first. Um, dominated the Eagles pretty much start to finish. Um, yeah, the the 21. There were some garbage time points in there, but. The Cowboys never really um, were were trailing or threatened in this game. Um, Dak went 21 to 26 for 238, and three touchdowns, and Zeke, big Zeke, finally shows up against a depleted Eagles defense. Uh, goes 17 carries for 95 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Jalen Hurts on the Philly side of the ball went for 25 to 39. 326, two touchdowns, two picks. I mean, I fell for Hurts in this game. Uh, that Philly O-line is so depleted. Um, it's hard to believe that they were, you know, the upper echelon of the NFL like four years ago is when they won their Super Bowl. And they tried to ride with that team, and, and they never really made any big splashes um, after they won it. Which, I mean, the following year, typically you don't, right? I mean, you, you roll with what you got the next year and see where you're at. But uh, Philly's just never filled in those gaps. And, and I mean, Miles Sanders, I'm pretty sure his first carry ripped off like a 24-yard run. And then he ran the ball like five or six more times after that. So um, I understand they were trailing by a lot. But, I mean, even at a two-touchdown deficit in the first half, you shouldn't be so quick to abandon the run, um, but hey, I'm not an NFL coach. Doug Peterson, uh, coach of the Eagles. We'll see how much longer he's going to be the coach of the Eagles. Um, yeah, they, they got problems. Uh, uh, the only thing that may save him is being in that NFC East, but um, the, you could tell that, you know, they're they got a lot of holes, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, the Eagles are always beat up at, at the DB position, and, and it really showed. Um, and even in their interior D-line, uh, it, it's just not that same Eagles team. And um, they better figure it out. Um, everyone, of course, was heralding Dak Prescott for being the greatest thing on the planet and always oh, comeback player of the year, always oh, going to be MVP, always oh, going to be this, always oh, going to be that. Dak Prescott also had two fumbles in this game. One was lost. The other one, the Cowboys recovered. Um, if you're an avid listener of the show, you, you should know my thoughts on Dak. Um, Dak can make a bad team look real bad. But Dak can also make a good team look real good. And when Dak Prescott does this to a team like the Bucks or the Rams or, hey, even Tennessee, I don't know if they play this year, um, then let's start talking about it. But until that happens, he, he might be the front runner for comeback player of the year so far. Um, I don't get everybody's infatuation with the guy. Um, yeah. is he talented? Yeah. Is he a top five QB in the NFL? No, no, he's not. And I know I'm going to get some pushback on that because, oh, well, look at his stats. Well, we're three games in and I know the NFL is a fickle league and, Everybody is always, you know, let's make snap judgments after one game, right? Um, yeah, I mean, he was efficient, 21 of 26, but he played the Eagles, right? That's a divisional game, I understand. Um, but at, at the same time, it's, let's all just pump the brakes on the DAC train here, all right? He's, he's not that good, um, but we'll see. Maybe he'll, he'll surprise me. Uh, he got his big contract. Yeah, who knows, right? Let, let's see what happens. Um, yeah, like I said, Jalen Hurts was running for his life this whole game. That Eagles O-line is is uh, horrid, I guess, for lack of a better term. And uh, Jalen's going to be doing that quite regularly, I think. He will be... Uh, <laughs> good thing he's fleet of foot because uh, he's going to need it. Um yeah, so like I said, that leaves the Cowboys in first and the Eagles tied for second and with Washington in that division. So 
let's speed ahead to the Thursday nighter. Um, Jags Bengals. This is typically more of the Thursday night matchups that we're used to seeing. Um, you know, maybe not the <laughs> the best teams in the world, but uh, yeah, Jags 0-3, Bengals 2-1. Bengals looked good last week. They've looked good this season. They uh, they knocked off the Steelers last week, 24-10, and they are currently seven and a half point favorites in that game. Which I mean, I don't I don't think it would be. Uh, Crazy to bet the spread on this one. <clears throat> I mean, they they should be able to beat the Jags by at least 10. Um, yeah, I I can't see I can't see the Jags giving them a game. But Thursday nighters, you got to be careful. You you just never know what's going to happen on a Thursday night. But um, just some rankings between the two. Offensively, the Jags actually I'll rank them. They have the 23rd ranked offense in the NFL. The Bengals 28. Um, the Bengals haven't been putting up a ton of points, but their defense has been playing well. And, and actually, the Jags have the 29th ranked defense. The Bengals are number eight right now. Um, they've actually recorded three sacks in every game this year so far, which, I mean, hey, if you can pressure the quarterback in the NFL, you've got a good chance of winning. Um, passing game, Jags 27th, Bengals 28th. And rushing, the Jags are 18th and the Bengals are 17th. So on paper, uh, very even match other than the defenses. And uh, that's why I said bet the spread on the Bengals. Um, Joe Burrow's at home. Jags are coming in. Trevor Lawrence has thrown two picks at least in each of his NFL starts. Um, Jags are 0-3. Uh, fun fact, Trevor Lawrence actually went 34-2 and at Clemson when he played there. Um, so he's lost more games in the NFL than he did in his entire college career. Um, and I I can't see it turning around, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, they got a lot of new pieces there. Urban Meyer, rookie quarterback. You know, they, <laughs> they got their work cut out for them. Um, I like the Bengals in this one. Um, and I like them to cover too. So if you're going to bet a spread... Yeah, I bet it. Why not? Um, typically, I like to do this when uh, Reed's here, but Reed is not here today. So, um, I guess we're just going to get my lock and upset of the week, and then we'll get Reed's on Friday when he's back. So, let's move over to lock of the week. Um, of course, the easy lock this week is Tennessee over the Jets. Um, and they're only seven-point favorites in that game, which... Geez, I, I expected like 13 and a half, um, even 14 and a half. But they are currently only seven point favorites. But I think that's a no brainer, slam dunk. Um, you guys don't turn in for, tune in for, you know, easy picks like that. So I'm going to go a little off the wall here. And my lock of the week is Rams over the Cardinals. Now, Rams are two and one, Cards are three and oh. Divisional game. Uh, we're in Arizona this week, I'm pretty sure. So a lot, I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to catch a little flack over this one too. But uh, sorry, they are in LA. So at SoFi Stadium, um, I think the, uh, the Rams are going to expose Kyler Murray this week. Um, that Rams defense is tough. Their offense is equally as tough. Um, Rams four and a half point favorites. So they actually are favored in the game, but uh, I like them this week. And I like them for the rest of the year, pending they stay healthy. So lock of the week, Rams over the cards. I wouldn't be so crazy to bet the spread, though, at four and a half. Um, but hey, Rams beat the Bucks by 14 last week. So hard to say. I wouldn't bet the spread, but do take the Rams. Um, my upset of the week, I don't know how crazy it is to, to say it's it's a huge upset, but I think the majority of the folks who take the Bears in this game, also a divisional game, NFC North, or yeah, NFC North game, uh, I'm taking the Lions over the Bears this week. Um, that Bears offense is garbage. Um, we've, we've hit this topic a few times. And uh, Matt Nagy got cooked this week. 
by Rex Ryan and Dan Orlovsky on, uh, I can't remember what show it was, but um, they roasted that guy, and, and he deserves it. I mean, you know, you, you got a young athletic quarterback like Justin Fields, and, you know, you knew you were going to draft him, right? I mean, that, that was no mystery. Um, the Bears knew who they wanted, and they traded up and, and did whatever they had to do to get him, right? But yet it sure didn't look like Matt Nagy had a game plan for Justin Fields um, playing quarterback. I mean, this kid this kid can do a lot more than Nick Foles or Andy Dalton. I'll tell you that much. And, uh, yeah, the offensive woes in Chicago are, are going to continue. Um, like we said on Monday's show, Matt Nagy come out this week and said, oh, all three quarterbacks are in play. We'll see how the week goes, see who we're going to start. Um, I said, yeah, why wouldn't you start Nick Foles at this point? And, and I'm going to stick by that statement. I mean, Andy was hurt. <clears throat> We've seen Fields. Granted, we didn't see much of what he can do. But, I mean, if he's the future of your franchise, you're not going to, you know, ship him upstream. Um, but let's see what Nick can do. Maybe he can light a spark, um, get some continuity going inside of that offense. And, you know, maybe Fields needs to learn for another game or two or three, and hopefully Nick can fill that void. Um, but again, Nick Foles has proven that he doesn't have what it takes to be a starter in the NFL. Um, Jacksonville paid him starter money and signed him to a starter contract, and, and that didn't go anywhere. He broke his collarbone, and, and that was the end of the story for him in Jacksonville. But um, I like the Lions this week. Um, they're going to be hungry, and they've had a couple close games. I mean... The, yes, they're 0-3, but they're not as bad as, let's say, the Jets. Um, the Lions are actually somewhat competitive, whereas the Jets are not. And and I like I like the Lions. Um, Chicago, three-point favorite in that game. I'm going to say go ahead and bet the spread. Um, the Bears struggle to put up any points. So, And Detroit, they have receivers. they got a bit of a run game going now. Um, Goff has looked okay, um, but pretty much everyone's offense has looked better than Chicago, other than the Jets. So, um, better. Take the Lions this week. Even I'm going to tell Reed on Friday that he should take the Lions in a survivor pool. He won't do it, but I'm going to tell him he should, because why not? How, how many weeks can you bet the Lions in a survivor pool? Almost never. Um, okay, let's slide over to just a quick Hall of Fame discussion here. Um, if you were listening Monday, um, we had touched on uh, how the Chargers managed to lose, you know, those one and two point games all the way through. Um, for, you know, the past five or seven years, they, they would lose a lot of close games. And there just wasn't a lot that they could ever do about it. And we talked about Phillip Rivers, and, and that was when, you know, they managed to lose all those close games. He was there for 14 seasons. So, um, I mean, they had a few good seasons. They went 14-2 and two one year, won that division. Um, but never really could get to the dance. And I don't think they've... Eh, Philip Rivers never been to a Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, they had LaDainian Tomlinson for a while. They, you know, Antonio Gates. They have they had a team, right? They could just never put it together. And we talked about Philip Rivers and his zero rings. And I like to blame a lot of that on Philip Rivers because I was never a Rivers believer. Um, but let's... Let's go through some of Phillips' stats. And, I mean, it'd be nice to have someone here to debate this with, but I'm going to present my side of the story, and then Reed can present his on Friday. But Philip Rivers, fifth all-time in yards, was 63,440. Fifth all-time in touchdowns, 421. Um, to put that into perspective, Aaron Rodgers currently has 418. And Big Ben currently has 399. So both of those guys should pass him. Um, Aaron will this year for sure. Um, we'll see what Ben does. But 
Uh, 12th all time in passer rating with a rating of 95.2. Um, that puts him in the same category. Peyton Manning had a 96.5 um, passer rating career. And Matt Ryan currently has a 94.4 passer rating. So, I mean, from Peyton Manning to Matt Ryan is quite a quite a stretch. And I would put Phillip Rivers more in the Matt Ryan camp than I would the Peyton Manning camp. Um, 23rd all-time in interceptions with 209. 12th in passing yards per game, per game with 260. Uh, again, to put that into perspective, Aaron Rodgers at 259.5, Big Ben 259. So... No, not overly mind blowing, but uh, but solid. Uh, tenth and fourth quarter comebacks so with 29. Uh, to give you an idea of the range there, Tom Brady has 40, Big Ben has 36, Matt Stafford has 32, and Matt Ryan has 31. So all of those guys um, actually outperform Philip in in that. Um, <laughs> I mean, he had a lot of opportunities for those fourth quarter comebacks, but they would lose those games all the time. Um, so, I mean, and sorry, he's 14th in completion percentage with a 64.7 completion percentage career. So look, sitting back and, of course, zero rings, right? Um, I mean, that's, that's a big one for me. If I had to pick today... If Philip Rivers is going to the hall, it's a no for me. And the reason being is he's going to get passed on a lot of these lists by guys that are playing this year. And he fits more into the Matt Ryan side of the equation than he does, let's say, the Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, obviously the Tom Brady's. Um, it, it's a no for me. Um, unless you think Matt Ryan's going to go to the Hall of Fame. I can't see why he would. I mean, he, he's going to have a very similar career to Philip Rivers. But with zero rings, if, if Philip at least had one ring, I'd probably say yes. But with zero rings, the guy could never get it done. He could never clutch it out. And he was never, yeah, he, he wasn't clutch enough to win those tight games, to win those playoff games. And, I mean, yeah, he could throw a ball, but... Uh, there's been a lot of guys in the NFL that can do that. So, I mean, the reason he has probably a lot of these records um, is longevity. He, he played quite a few years, right? So, um, yeah. Leave your thoughts in the comments under, uh, under this episode. And tell me what you think. Is Philip Rivers a Hall of Famer? I say no. Now, my expectations are through the roof. I mean, I've, I've got a very very high uh high expectation level and uh and philip never met it and uh yeah i'm sure i'm gonna get blasted over it but a lot of people are gonna agree with me too so i mean take your pick take it or leave it right that's my opinion you don't like it that's okay I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it so um yeah that's that's where I'm at with with Philip Rivers and uh, and the whole thing. He uh, granted, I think he has like nine kids, so that's pretty good. But I don't think that's good enough to get him into the hall. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe that's what the evaluators look at. Um, no, they don't. But yeah, again, leave your thoughts, leave your comments, and we will touch on them on Friday. Um, curious to hear what you guys think. Because that's probably one of the highest um, debated guys as to whether or not they're going to go into the hall. And, and I think, you know, from an emotional standpoint, he's going to get in. Um, a lot of people seem to like him. I was never a huge fan, but that's me. So let's move over to baseball. Whew. This AL wildcard race is really turning into something. Um, so as we uh, say on Monday, nothing has changed from the division leader standpoint. Nobody's going to catch Tampa. Um, nobody's going to catch the White Sox. And nobody's going to catch the Astros. So I'm going to say that we are locked in um, from a divisional standpoint. 
Now the Yankees are two games up on the Red Sox, who and the Red Sox currently hold the second spot. Um, Red Sox lost to Baltimore yesterday, so that one hurts. That one is important. Um, I'm just going to pull up the MLB scoreboard here right now because they play again tonight. I'm fairly certain. Yes, Baltimore beat, or sorry, Boston beat Baltimore tonight, six nothing. So. Um, that helps if you're a Red Sox fan. Um, as of this afternoon, the Mariners are only half a game back. They're currently playing the A's um, in a three or four game stand. That game's 0 0 right now, top of the second. Um, Toronto, one game back, and they lost to the Yanks yesterday, 7 2. And their game could very well be over. They played today. Toronto won. So they're, they're giving themselves a fighting chance here. And the A's are three and a half back. So I, I think it's safe to say if the A's lose tonight, they're out. Um, because that would move the Mariners another half game up on them. Um, but, I mean, we got, yeah, really five teams in the running here. Um, the A's could be out tonight. But the Jays, they're there. But now they got the Mariners breathing down their neck too, right? So it's getting real interesting. Um yeah, I watched the uh, the Dodgers game last night, Dodgers Padres, and uh, Dodgers won. Um, but man, those are those are some intense games right now. Um, I'm an AL guy over an NL guy just for the the simple fact they score more in the AL due to the DH, right? But um, yeah, any of these tight playoff race games that I can, I, I watch them because it's good ball. Um, let's move over to the NL. Speaking of the NL. Uh, we still have the Giants, the Brewers, and the Braves um, leading their divisions. Dodgers are only two back of the Giants, so so the Dodgers could slide into that division lead, and the Giants could have to play the St. Louis Cardinals, who won 17 straight, 17 straight games. In the August 8th, they were like a 9% chance to get into the playoffs. Or something ridiculous like that and they banged out 17 straight wins to secure the second wild card spot I mean you, you see some of these fairy tale Cinderella runs and it's just like wow that's impressive 17 straight um, so congratulations to the st. Louis Cardinals um, you guys earned that one um, yeah, oh, sorry. And uh, Philly's three and a half back of Atlanta um, to catch that um, division. But, I mean, they're just running out of time, right? They're just running out of time. I don't think they're going to catch them. And Atlanta beat them tonight. So, I, I arguably, Philly's eliminated. So, the NL is pretty much set. The only thing that's really up in the air is can the Dodgers catch the Giants? Uh, Dodgers are currently beating the Padres. Um, four nothing, end of the first inning. So it's looking good for them. Um, yeah, Milwaukee, they beat St. Louis tonight. St. Louis's streak ends at 17, but uh, they did what they needed to do. They got the second wild card spot they're in. So uh, just kind of a, a side note. Um, oh yeah, Brewers pitcher. Um, yeah, pitcher Devin Williams. Um, <laughs> Going to miss probably all of the postseason um, due to the fact the Brewers secured their division on Sunday night. And uh, their own little party. Things got a little crazy. Buddy punches the wall and breaks his pitching hand. Okay, so you're now, you know, I mean, you're one of the top three teams in the NL. All right, we're going to the postseason. That's a fact. Let's get stupid and punch a wall. So he did. Need surgery. Stupid bonehead of the week right there. I mean, what a dummy. Why would you do that? I mean, you just hurt your team. So, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I, I hope that he's a young kid, right? But... Uh, not smart, not the smartest of plays. Um, yeah, gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent here. So, um, 
it was on Facebook today. There was an article about the Jays and and you know you know just pretty much a summary of just what what I told you about. And you know I threw a comment on there. You know the Jays had a good run, um, but playing the Yanks, they're gonna have their hands full, and you know they're literally like one or two pieces away from uh, being legit contenders. Because if, if you compare their roster to the Yankees or the Red Sox, you know, they might be a little bit deeper. Granted, Simeon broke, made history this year. Uh, Trevor Simeon hit 44 home runs, the most ever by a second baseman in Major League history. So uh, congratulations to Mr. Simeon. And Vladdy had a great season, right? Um, so, you know, I mean, obviously I'm a Jays fan, right? But I said the Jays had a good run. Oh, then some asshole gets on there. Would you still be saying that if, if you know, if they had won? Like, what, that they had a good run? Yeah, of course I would, right? And then you get, <laughs> you get these assholes who get on there. Oh, well, what pieces do they need? They're not missing anything. Well, if they're not missing anything, why are they not winning the AL East? Asshole, right? So, I mean, do yourself a favor. <laughs> don't comment on shit because you get all these morons that come out of nowhere that think you're attacking the Blue Jays. Um, when I mean, yeah, the, if the Jays were a perfect team, they'd have won the AL East and they'd win the World Series. But they're not. They're a young team who has a ton of potential. And I think if they make one or two moves in the offseason, yeah, there's a good chance they're going to be the winners of that division next year. And that's a good division. That's one of the best divisions in baseball. So... I mean, do yourself a favor. Um, yeah, don't get in a conversation with some of these clowns that are out there. Um, because, number one, they automatically know more than you. And, two, nobody's looking for a discussion. They're looking for a fight, right? So, um, yeah, there's some real buffoons out there, and this guy was one of them. Um, but regardless, um, let's move over to the NBA. Um yeah, we definitely wanted to touch on this just because it's it's really percolating and brewing, and it could have some some repercussions with the Raptors. Um, but let's get into it. The Ben Simmons saga. So I believe it was last Wednesday, a week ago, that we were talking about Ben Simmons and how he's made it very clear he doesn't want to play for the Philadelphia 76ers anymore. He will not play another game wearing a 76ers uni. Um, he's got four years left on that max deal. Uh, makes it hard to move the guy, right? And Philly's asking the moon and the stars for him. So there hasn't been a lot of talk on the trade front. Um, he hasn't spoken to the 76ers since mid-August. Um, the owner of the 76ers flew out to LA to go see Ben and sit down with him and try and get him on the same page prior to the season starting. Uh, ben made it very clear at that point there was no reconciliation here. Um, he, he's not playing for the 76ers. Now, what does that mean? Um, so I was doing a little homework on this whole situation today. Uh, ben Simmons can be fined $227,000 per preseason game all the way up until the 20th game of the regular season. So he will forfeit $227,000 per game. Okay. Um, after game 20, so 21 to 82, that goes up to $300,000 per game that he will forfeit. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, but Ben's confident that, that he can get moved or dealt prior to that happening. Um, so what is this even similar to? Uh, who's done this in the past, right? I mean, this is an uncharted territory for a guy to say, I'm unhappy with my team and I want to move on, right? It is a little strange that it's happening that early into a max deal, but it's not unheard of. Let's rewind to 2018, Jimmy Butler, okay? Jimmy Butler was with the Minnesota Timberwolves at that point. Um, Jimmy had a bad knee going into 2018 and the first practice back, it was actually prior to the season starting, was when Jimmy went off on his tangent and there was management at the first practice and and he was telling everyone, F all you, you need me to win. If, if you follow the NBA, you'll remember this. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, 
this this is comparable to that. Now, Jimmy only had one year left on his deal. And then he ended up going to Philly after yeah, 12 games into the season. Um, they started 3-7, and seven, lost four straight. And, yeah, they were 3-9, and nine, I think, at that point. And then the Timberwolves pulled the trigger and moved him. Um, he, he wasn't effective. He was kind of a, not kind of, he was a distraction. So they, uh, they got rid of him. And they moved forward without him. And he went to Philly and took him to the Eastern Conference Final, where they lost to the Raptors. So, um, so that's, that's kind of a comparison to, to what's happening. Now, um, would lots of teams like to have Ben Simmons? Sure they would. It, the guy can play defense. You know, he's a top five defender in the NBA, in, in, my, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Kid can play defense. Can't score worth a shit. Um, can't shoot. But, uh, hey, maybe he will develop a shot. But until he does, nobody's going to take him serious enough to give Philly three firsts and two seconds, right? It's just not going to happen. But that being said, there has been some interest percolating with Portland because at the end of this last season, Dame Lillard, obviously unhappy. Um, I mean, he carries that team every year. Um, one of the premier point, point guards in the NBA. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. Um, he carries that team every year, and they lose out in the you know quarterfinals, maybe the semifinals. Um, but there's just not enough depth there. They can't get it together. And Dame has opened the idea of leaving Portland. So there's been lot, there's been grumblings that Simmons to Portland, Dame to Philly. I mean, Dame and Philly, I think, is a nice fit. Um, I, I don't know how much better Simmons going to Portland is going to make Portland but they do struggle on the defensive side of the ball. They win so many games because they could score so much, right? I mean, between Dame and C.J. McCollum, and, you know, they could score. But uh, they do struggle defensively. They always have, like, bottom, you know, of 32 teams, they're ranked, like, 28th in defense every year, right? And, I mean, come playoff time, hence why they lose out in the first round a lot. So, I mean, of course, there would have to be picks, draft picks coming back to Philly, but there has been some talk there. There also has been some talk of Ben Simmons coming to the Raptors. Now, kind of some of the potential deals that are out there floating around would be, you know, OG Ananobi, Siakam, you know, a first and a second, right? I can't see the Raptors doing that deal. Um, we got FVB. Fred Van Vliet, right? Um, he's playing well. OG Ananobi, great defender um, and can score. I mean, the kid can get hot from time to time. I hated the Siakam deal the minute they signed him to it. But, uh, I mean, it is what it is. If they're going to live and die with Pascal Siakam, it's going to be another lost season for them, um, I think. And arguably last season was a lost season. They were out of contention. And they still had Kyle. They got no Lowry this year, right? So, um, yeah. I mean, if they don't make... I would be open to moving Siakam for Simmons. Um, because I think you could plug Ben into the four. And, and he would do a fine job, right? He's, he's just not a point guard. As much as he wants to say he is, as much as he wants everyone to believe he's a point guard, he's not. He's You typically don't have a 6'10 point guard. Um, and he doesn't see the floor like LeBron does. LeBron's six eight. LeBron can run the point though. I mean, that dude's smart. Been in the league for 18 years or whatever it's been. But um, Ben Simmons ha needs to realize for him to be effective, um, it's not going to be from outside of 12 feet of the rim. So I think that is where it needs to go. Um, so are, you know, are the Raptors in play here? Um, for a potential deal for Simmons, yeah, there's there's talk. Um, should they do it? I mean, it always depends on who's you know what the offer is. What do they want? What are they giving up? Um, but I, I do know bringing in Goran Dragic this year is not going to push the Raptors back into the playoffs. 
Um, Drogic is a serviceable point guard, but he's also like 35 years old, right? Well, you just ship the 35-year-old better point guard out of town. So we'll see. Um, I don't have a lot of high hopes for the Raptors this year, but uh, hey, maybe I'll be wrong. That NBA is getting super competitive, and you know you can hang your hat pretty much on four teams that are going to make it right now. And then the bottom four, it's it's kind of a crapshoot. But you look at the ra- rosters, the Raptors roster on paper, they ain't going far. Um, if they make it, it'll be a first round exit. Um, there's they're lacking a lot of depth right now, and I mean of course that championship winning team had a ton of depth, um, hence why they won a title, right? But I think the Raptors have uh, a lot of work to do from a front office perspective. And I hope they get it done. I, I like the Raptors. Um, but, I mean, you got Philly. I mean, they're, they're in turmoil. But I, even without Simmons, they're a better team than the Raptors. You got Milwaukee. You got the Nets. You know, you, you got lots of teams that are up and coming here. Um, Charlotte, uh, the Pelicans, you know, New Orleans. The, there's talk of Ben going there. Um and then they could use a point guard, right? They traded Drew Holiday. They got rid of Alonzo. So, I mean, the point guard position's open. But, like I said, I don't know how bad you want Ben running the point. So, we'll see. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're going to follow this closely. So, uh, you know, if, if you're curious as to what's what's going on out there and what's happening with uh, Ben Simmons, which I think everybody is, um, you know, stay tuned, or stay tuned to us. We'll... Uh, We'll roll up our sleeves and, and dig to the dig to the truth on this one. So, um, yeah, NHL. Um, I mean, preseason started. There's there's not a lot going on. I know um, the Kraken. <laughs> I'm kind of following the Kraken being it's their inaugural season. They got blown out by the Oilers last night, six nothing. But the Oilers played every starter, and and uh, maybe they want to feel good about themselves. I don't know. Um, the Kraken didn't have all their starters in. You know, it's preseason, right? Who cares? But, uh, yeah, apparently the uh, the Oilers felt the need to dress all their studs. And, uh, you know, that'd be shitty if a, a Connor McDavid or a Leon Dreisaitl went down with an injury in, in a nothing game like that. But, uh, yeah, I guess if you need to beat the Kraken 6 nothing to beat your chest and feel good about yourself, you go for it, Dave Tippett. Um, yeah, I'm not an Oiler fan, if you couldn't tell. I'm a Canuck fan, and the Oilers, also an inept organization. Them and the Bears would get along very well, um, or the Jets. Um, you know, you, you have, I mean, a lot of people say the best player on the planet. I don't think you can disagree with that statement, um, in Connor McDavid, and they made the playoffs once. Since he's been there. I mean, come on. That's not good enough. Um, but they just can't help themselves when it comes to the draft. That, oh, we need to draft a small center that is skilled. Right? That, that's what they always draft. And what's the problem with the Oilers? Every year, year in and year out, goaltending and defense. But yet they refuse to draft a D-man and they refuse to draft a goalie. So, I mean, it is what it is. Good luck. Um, I, uh, Kraken are playing tonight. They actually play the Flames tonight, seven o'clock puck drop. So, oh, yeah, this isn't updated, but whatever. They're playing the Flames tonight, so we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, the Jets actually thumped the Oilers tonight, five one. Um, Jets, I mean, they're going to be good again this year. Um, lots to like there. The Leafs hammered on the Senators four nothing. Um, Senators are still trash. They, I mean, I don't know. Nothing good comes out of Ottawa, right? I mean, from uh, Parliament Hill to the Senators to the Red Blacks, they all suck. They're all garbage, Um, especially on Parliament Hill. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Take it or leave it. Love it or hate it. I don't care. That being said, that is the end of our show for today. Um, I covered everything I wanted to cover. 
Um, Reed will be back Friday. We'll get Reed's locks and upsets of the week, so stay tuned for that. We are going to do our boomer bus on Friday. Um, we don't. Eh, we might have an eight o'clock show. Raiders play um, in town. They're supposed to kick off at 4:30, but that might be changing now. Um, so we'll keep you posted on Facebook, Instagram. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at. We'll be back Friday. So uh, yeah, enjoy another beautiful day here. I, I don't know where everybody lives, but it was a fantastic day here. So keep enjoying that warm fall weather. Keep watching those sports. And on that note, chat out.